is crucial. We need it. We need to be connected to ourselves and to each other and to the world around us. We need it because it brings us strength and solace and love. And so, at the same time, connection makes us vulnerable. It leaves us open to being damaged, being hurt by others. And this makes us strong, but it also makes us fragile. I'm struck by the incredible importance of this. Back in the spring of 2007, I became a beekeeper. And there's nothing like the magic of bees for changing your worldview. When I started keeping bees, I started to see the world through completely different eyes. Where I used to see a decoration on your dining room table, now I see bee food. <laughs> and where I used to see a bright yellow blemish in an otherwise pristine green lawn, again, I see bee food. <laughs> Vegetables in gardens, apples on trees, weeds and wildflowers, stuff that grows in the highway medians. All of this is bee food. The longer I looked at the world this way, the more connections I saw, and the deeper and deeper they got. Everything was connected to everything. It was mind-blowing. <laughs> now, I'm not from Maine, by the way, whoever had the bet. <laughs> but I like living here. And these guys, Mofka, uh, is, are one of the big reasons, because I am very big on the idea of organic food. And MOFCA is the biggest and the oldest organic association in the United States. Well, who? Well, MOFCA. So we're pretty lucky here in Maine, but you can't really live in these United States without realizing that there's something a little less than organic going on with our food system. So travel back with me in time. Let's go back to 1971. Richard Nixon is president. And Richard Nixon just appointed a man named Earl Butts to the position of Secretary of Agriculture. <laughs> He's the head of the USDA. And for the next five years, from 1971 to 1976, Earl Butts promoted a policy, and he directed it right at America's farmers. And Earl's policy was this. Plant fence row to fence row. Pile up every piece of land that you can get your tractor on. Get big or get out. So Earl brought us big ag, and it began to transform the way we grew food in America. He brought us industrial agriculture. And big was supposed to mean better. Now, it sounds efficient. And if it's efficient, then that should mean more food. And that should mean cheaper food. And that should mean fewer hungry people. Ergo, big is better. But buried down beneath all this efficiency is this concept of monoculture. That's what you call it when all those big farms are growing just one crop each. Thanks to Earl, a lot of people bought into this and decided that this was truly the best way to farm. But monoculture isn't how nature does things. Nature doesn't put all of her eggs into one basket like that. That's way too risky. Nature insists upon balance and on diversity because diversity works. It works to control pests. It works to replenish the soil. It works to maintain balance. Nature creates a whole different kind of efficiency and a sort of a magical alchemy as well. But magic isn't what's happening in industrial agriculture. Industrial agriculture creates industrial problems. A monoculture farm creates a kind of imbalance where a single pest that thrives on that single crop that we're growing on our monoculture farm can easily wipe out the entire farm. And so to prevent that kind of disaster, our industrial farmer uses pesticides. And monoculture farming also depletes the soil very quickly. We plant the same thing year after year after year in the same location. So to counteract this problem, our industrial farmer uses fertilizer. Now it was one thing for me as a beekeeper back when I thought about us putting this kind of stuff on the food that we were eating. But then I made the connection. Wait a minute, wait a minute, we're putting this stuff on the bee food. <laughs> What were we thinking? <laughs> and speaking of bees, as we are, there's another thing that comes into play in monoculture farming. For instance, these are almond trees. In the state of California, there are over 750,000 acres of almond trees. And if you try to picture how big that is, that's about the size of the state of Rhode Island. It's a lot. 
So here we've got these 750,000 plus acres of almonds. And of course, the almond grower wants these almond trees to make lots and lots and lots of almonds. And so they hire beekeepers who bring the bees to the trees. So beekeepers load their beehives onto pallets, and those pallets get loaded up on trucks, and those trucks drive across the United States to California, and those bees just pollinate the living daylights out of those almond trees. And in a bee world, this is a really, really big deal. This is the largest migratory pollination event in the country. So three weeks later, there's that beekeeper back there, and he's loading those beehives back on the pallets, and the pallets are going back on the trucks, and we've got to get those bees back out of there. You know why? Because almond trees only bloom for 22 days. 22 days. So for the other 340 some days out of the year, there's nothing in those almond groves for a bee to eat. It's a bee desert. In other words, industrial agriculture created industrial beekeeping. Now to a beekeeper, that looks like a lot of broken connections. So now let's fast forward to the year 2006. That's when we discovered that we were having a pretty serious problem with bees. Entire hives were collapsing, they called it. What it meant was the bees were just vanishing. They disappeared, and no one knew why. This is the bee problem that became known as CCD, or Colony Collapse Disorder. And here we are five years later. Scientists still don't know the reason for this bee problem, although we've sure thrown an enormous amount of time and money at it. And all of that in the hopes of finding a single solution to what we hoped was a single problem. But researchers concede now that CCD doesn't have just a single problem or just a single cause, that it's caused by combinations of things acting together. And this is where things start to get really scary because the number of possible combinations and the number of possible connections is infinite and unknowable. Now, honeybees are really closely connected to their environment, and they're small. They're small enough that when there's a problem with their environment, they act as a really good early warning system. So it's with good reason that honeybees get called the canary in the coal mine. But just what is it that the bees are trying to tell us? What are they warning us about? Well, I believe that what the bees are saying is this. Our food system is broken. Monoculture farming and the use of pesticides and chemical fertilizers are destroying the best and the most important parts of nature's magic. And they are telling us that it's time to stop believing that big is better and to start working to restore the balance and to rebuild the connections that we all need so much. Now, with what I do for a living, I spend a lot of my time talking about bees, and a lot of worried people have come and asked me, can we turn this thing around? Do we stand a chance? And what I try to say to them is this. We are all connected. And so every bad thing, every toxin, every poison, every imbalance, every negative attitude, all these affect everyone. And that's where we're the most fragile. But hey, we are all connected. And so the reverse is also true, that every good thing, every joy, every pure wonder, every positive intent, all of these also affect everyone. And that's where we're the strongest. But there's something else as well. Because we're not just all connected to each other. We're also connected to nature. We're all a part of that magical alchemy. And as subtle and mysterious as that is, and as difficult to define, and hard to quantify, and as damaged as it may have gotten, it's still the strongest part. And it's the part that makes us able to listen with our heart, and when we do, to understand that when you tug on one thing in nature, one thing, you're going to find that it's attached to everything else everything else. Thank you.